My name is Pablo Salas. I am a, research, a researcher at the Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership. And probably the reason why I am here is because over the last three years or so, I've been looking at the linkages or the nexus between food, water, and energy in the context of climate change. And I've been looking at particularly in the case of Brazil. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, meat or yeah, meat is pretty much at the center of that linkage. Um, so I, I want to tell you a bit of, of some very interesting data that we have, 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 have gathered in these this three years. Um, and as you know, today we are part of a very large international network. So commodities have traded all over the place. If you take one single commodity and two countries, do you know what, what is the single commodity that is traded the most on the planet, single country to country? Soybeans. So the trade from soybeans from, do you know from where to where? From Brazil to China, they amount roughly to $20 billion annually. Actually, it's on excess of $20 billion, 24, I think. Uh, and the second is also soybeans, but in this case from the US to China. And that's also around $20 billion annually. So we're talking about a trade between $40 and $50 billion annually, just between those three countries. Now you may ask yourself, why is China buying so much soybeans? And here I guess it is the core of my message, and I think it's, uh, it's that when we, when we eat meat, uh, in pretty much as many of us don't know the history from it, uh, we don't know what is underlined of, of these years and years of, of, of advertisement. In many ways, we also don't know a lot of the complex relationship behind the food that we put in our plates. So I just wanted to bring you some of, of, of the highlights. Um, well, as you may know, Asian population in, in, in general, Chinese in particular, they are rising their um, economic standards. They are getting richer, and as part of that, as a n normal process, they are changing diets. So they are eating more meat than before because they have more resources. That's something that Western cultures did in the past as well. Um, but they don't have the, their land is not particularly suitable to produce the food for the, for the animals. So actually they have to import it. And they import that food mostly from the US and Brazil. Brazil is a huge amount of land excellent conditions for creation of, of soybeans. Now, soybeans are produced uh, in, in, in land, and land is particularly suitable when before it was used for cattle. So actually a very common trade that you find nowadays is that people that want to produce soybeans, they buy land from cattle ranchers. But the cattle industry is also expanded. So do you know what happened when the cattle industry want to expand? They go for forests. And that is what we saw mostly on the forest fires in, in Brazil in, over the past, uh, the past year. Uh, so you can see how that phenomenon, which is called indirect land use change, is a complete chain of events in which changes, cultural changes and economic changes in one part of the world, which imply some changes in the diet, have a complete different impact on a very different part of the planet. Right. Uh, and many of those traits, of many of those, of those impacts, are not easy to tackle. If you put yourself, for example, in the shoes of a policymaker, of a local policymaker in Brazil, what do you do about it? Because that's a global phenomenon. If you treat it as a local phenomenon, it's, you're missing a big part of the picture. And therefore, us, we need to start looking ourselves, uh, particularly thinking on the meat uh, consumption, as a global citizens and try to understand what is behind the network of or the supply chain that produce our, our resources. Um, so today, if you look at the, at the data, uh, we lose roughly around 9 million hectares per year of forest. And around half of that is for, consumption for, for meat production. Now, how many of you know the area of um, 
Belgium. Belgium is 3 million hectares. So that is roughly around three Belgiums every year. And around half of that, so around one and a half Belgium, is just for the expansion of the cattle industry. Um, so therefore, I'm not here, and that's a very important message for also, we, I'm not here to tell people what they can or they cannot do or they have to do. That is a very personal decision. But it's very important for us to understand the consequences of the things that we do such that we can do it informally. Thank you.